Hi and welcome to this video demonstrating two very powerful JavaScript technologies, React Native and EWDJS working together. My name is Rob Tweed, I'm from M Gateway Developments Limited, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate a native mobile application running natively in iOS, which has been written using the new and exceptionally powerful React Native framework. Why is this significant? Well, it's because React Native has allowed me to build this entirely in JavaScript. I haven't needed to learn Objective-C or Swift, and yet I've been able to create a full-blown native iOS application. This is made possible because Facebook, the developers of the React.js framework for browser application development, have ported React.js to work in the JavaScript core virtual machine that is now part of the iOS environment. When you render markup in React.js, you actually manipulate a virtual DOM, and behind the scenes, React.js works out the most efficient and fastest change needed to the actual browser's DOM for you. So React Native applies the same approach. You write to the same virtual DOM, but now, behind the scenes, React Native updates and modifies the iOS device's user interface using the proper native UI kit components, not JavaScript emulations. Interaction with the native environment happens asynchronously in one or more separate threads, so the JavaScript logic isn't held up by heavy computational or resource-intensive work elsewhere. In other words, this gives us proper, full-blown, full-speed native iOS applications, and yet you can write them entirely in JavaScript. Not only that, I've also integrated the back-end EWDJS framework. If you've not heard of EWDJS, it's probably best thought of as a Node.js JavaScript equivalent to the Apache Tomcat application container, and also with I.O. provided by JSON messages over WebSockets. It's very powerful, very easy to use, and you can find more about it here. So without further ado, let's have a look at the demo application. It's not meant to be a complete application, and yes, it could do with a bit more polish and refinement, but I've put it together as a quick proof of concept of what these technologies can allow you to do in very short order. So this is actually my iPod Touch you're seeing, and here in the top left of this screen, you see my Vista demo application. I'll fire it up, and you can see that it wants me to log in. If I enter the wrong information, and click the login button, then it brings up an error. I'll click OK. But if I put in the right credentials, it'll take a second. Now I'm into the application. So as you can see, it's asking me to select a patient. So I can select a patient by name. If I tap here, up comes the keyboard. And every time I type a key, I'll get a list of potential matches. So if I type in A, up come a list. And each time I type another character, it refines the list. So if I type in N, now we're just down to the one starting AN. And uh, and if I type an S, then we'll just get the Andersons. This list is coming back in real time on every keystroke. So let's go back to just the A's. And I'll select this patient, Adams. And I see some basic information in this tab page. And if I click this right-hand tab, Allergies, then up comes a list of this patient's allergies straight out of the database, and again, delivered in real time. I can switch back and forth between these tabs, so back to the demographics, back to the allergies. The information that we see in these tab screens is cached, so it isn't actually going back to the back end to retrieve them each time. But if I click the back button up there, then it goes back and I can select another patient. So I can go back in, maybe go for T this time, or maybe Z, one of these test patients, test patient three, and now we'll get a different set 
of allergies, just one in this case. So that's basically it. Fairly simple application, but it's covering quite a lot of functionality. And what's running in this iPod Touch was completely written using React Native, all in JavaScript. Now, some of you watching this video will recognize what this application is actually doing. It's accessing a copy of the open source electronic healthcare record, or EHR, that's known as Vista. It's the same EHR that the US Department of Veterans Affairs uses for managing the healthcare needs of about 8 million US veterans. I'm just running a demo copy of the open source version of this EHR. And don't worry, that was all fake data. So where does EWDJS come in? Well, it's providing a Node.js wrapper around Vista and providing JavaScript access to the Vista application's logic. My iPod Touch was communicating via WebSockets with EWDJS. WebSocket support was only added to React Native a few weeks ago, and it works beautifully, as, as you saw when I did the patient lookup. Those of you who are familiar with EWDJS will know that it was designed to provide a WebSocket-based backend application container for browser applications, but here we're using an iOS native application. If I make the EWDJS console visible and do some more stuff in the iPod Touch, so I'll select a patient, maybe go for C, C, and you'll see in the console things are happening. Select this patient, get the allergies, go back, select a different patient, get the allergies. And you'll see that EWDJS at the back end is behaving as if it was communicating with a browser. And in fact, EWDJS really does think that it is communicating with a browser. Furthermore, this means that if you already have a browser-based EWDJS application, you can write a React Native user interface and hook it into the same back-end logic. And if you adopt React.js as your framework for browser-based applications, then you can apply the same development approach and patterns to both your browser-based apps and your mobile apps. This is all possible because I'd loaded into the React Native JavaScript environment a copy of the EWDJS front-end JavaScript logic, this thing called EWDJS Client. It's available for anyone to use and is loaded using NPM when setting up the React Native development environment. The really cool thing is that the React Native developer then has access to the standard EWDJS messaging APIs that he or she would use when developing a browser-based application. Basically, if you know how to develop an EWDJS application for a browser, you can now develop native mobile applications. Here's an example React Native component from the application I showed you. This is the one that looks after the login screen. You'll see that it's all standard React Native stuff, all JavaScript. And if you look at the button, this touchable highlight, you'll see that there's a handler on press, this dot on login pressed. And if we go up here, here's the function on login pressed. And down here is where it's sending the WebSocket message, in this case a login one, with our access code and verify code. And the done function is invoked when the response comes back. And you'll see that if it returns an error, we get an iOS alert. Otherwise, it moves us on to the landing page and that's in its own separate component. What I've demonstrated in this video is available today. Those of you who use InterSystems Cache can use React Native and EWDJS to allow native mobile access to your cache applications. And in fact, EWDJS now allows any database to be integrated at the back end, so the power and simplicity of EWDJS can be enjoyed by everyone. Well, that's the demonstration. I hope you liked it. If you're interested in finding out more about how to build React Native applications with EWDJS, please get in touch. Otherwise, watch this space for a forthcoming online course on Udemy.